think let's start with it. Uh, yeah. Yes, no question. Yeah. Dr. Bishma, okay? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I think uh, welcome to the uh, afternoon session. Uh, morning session was uh, very nice and with very informative talks and uh, very uh, nice discussions we had. So the first talk in the post lunch session is by Ms. Mona Lavsani. She's an Indian uh, Iranian architect and researcher from Tehran University who explores sustainable design and fabrication methods. She has shown good skills and knowledge in computational design, digital fabrication, and bio-based materials through her academic and professional projects. Her research focuses on finding feasible solutions that can reduce the environmental impact of building construction. She believes that by using innovative technologies and natural materials, more efficient and resilient structures should be created that harmonize with nature. Therefore, she researched using mycelium-based composite as a building material for constructing simple and regenerative habitats. Habitants. I welcome you, Dr. Ms. Mona, uh, uh, for your talk on biofabricating mycelium-based composites for low-tech habitats. Please, uh, please go ahead with your talk. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I'm gonna screen share and yeah. Okay. Uh, could you notify me if you see the screen, my screen? Yeah, at present, uh, it's not visible. Yeah, yeah, it's visible. Okay. It's clear. Yeah. Okay. Um, so thank you for this opportunity and hello to everyone. Uh, my presentation is on biofabricating with mycelium-based composites for low-tech habitats. But before starting to talk about mycelium-based composite, I would like to look at the current trend of the AEC industry. Uh, in this current trend, we extract the raw material from the nature and transport it to the uh, factories to process it and to convert it to building materials. Then the resulted materials again transport uh, from the factories to the construction sites for constructing buildings. After the life cycle of the building, we end up with some waste. So we don't have, um, we actually, if, if we want to, in, uh, to say it in nutshell, um, unfortunately we are converting our resources to some material and during this process we are producing a huge amount of carbon dioxide uh, actually the aec industry and cons building construction is responsible about almost 30 percent of the carbon dioxide emission all over all around the world so uh, and this would be even um, more altering if uh, we considering that we are we would um, encounter the lack of resources in the near future and also we currently uh, encountering the global warming uh, issue and um, our city somehow surrounded with huge amount of waste materials uh, from um, the construction debris so should we change the aec industry of course we should change but um, just look at uh, the issues, the current issues. Uh, could we stop the constructions? And definitely not, because the population of the world is increasing dramat dramatically. Uh, as in 2035, we should expect uh, almost 9 billion people population on the planet. So um, we can't even stop the construction constructing building and also we have to even speed up uh, building construction to cover all the uh, people's need for shelter and habitats but um could we uh, change the aec industry um it's a really hard question uh, 
in the short term, definitely we couldn't, uh, we could not change the AEC industry because uh, so many people and so many industries are involved in this industry. Uh, if we want to uh, look at the main parts of the building construction, there are uh, three parts, three processes, the design process, the material production and technique or construction. Um, any change uh, in each of these process or each of these parts, parts could affect directly on uh, the other two because these three are so connected and are so related to each other. So um, if it, be, it would be really hard if we want to change the AEC industry in the short term and it's somehow impossible. But how we could ease the problem? Um, one of the issue is to lessen the complexity and the high take of uh, high take of uh, in all uh, in all of these processes. Um, in this way, if we want to uh, simplify um, each of these uh, processes and each of these sections, we could uh, end up with a solution which is not uh, for sure a general solution, but it could somehow ease the problem and um, make the situation better. Um, okay, uh, here we want to focus on material, uh, we want to change the material um, in this cycle, in this process, and use mycelium-based materials more specifically uh, as a biomaterial. So we have to change the design and the geometries we would expect to build with this material and change the design process to material-driven uh, design and look at the, for example, the mechanical properties and the feature of this material and the feature uh, that this material could bring for us. And um, more specifically, we should simple, uh, simplify the technique and the technology that we're going to use in the construction because we want to uh, end up with a result in the short term. If I want to um, talk about the whole process of using mycelium in the as a building pro, as a building material, uh, we all know uh, about the mycel and the mushrooms. The mushrooms have um, spores. And through these spores, we could uh, create a liquid culture that it, uh, is used for creating spawns, uh, which are actually some particles that uh, could create, um, could be could be used as um, the base of uh, the mycelium-based composites. If we spread these uh, spawns uh, among uh, the some fiber layers, which the fiber layers is actually um, the, the agriculture waste, we could end up with a mixture of um, natural composite. And in this mixture, the mycelium is actually act as a natural glue. It could stick these fibers together to create a, a, somehow a combined uh, composite that it could be shaped differently uh, based on the mold we use. And after drying and eliminating or even removing the amount of water which is exists in the composite, uh, we could end up with um, a building material, which could be used in interior as interior material for acoustic or um, exterior material. However, it has its own challenges. Um, if we want to look at the agricultural waste or other substrate that could be used in this process, um, beside the straw, which is actually uh, a very good substrate for uh, cultivating mycelium, uh, we could use even the wooden chips uh, or even papers. So uh, we use we could use a variant amount of substrate um, during this pro and during this uh, material process and material production. Even we could use, for example, fabric, natural fabric or natural strings um, could be um, answer very good to this material because um, actually mycelium uh, feed from some uh, natural. Um, natural material such as hemp, um, plant um, plant waste or plant particles um, or agricultural waste uh, to grow. And through um, digesting these 
materials, it could uh, somehow spread its uh, network and uh, stick together all the parts of these materials. There are four general steps in biofabricating with mycelium-based materials. The first step is to create our base um, composite. Our base composite is actually created by spreading the mycelium spawn layer by layer uh, into our pasteurized or sterilized, um, sterilized uh, substrate, which is um, which could be straw, wooden chips, um, cotton strings, anything, uh, anything natu natural could be uh, digested uh, by mycelium and could be uh, pasteurized or sterilized to uh, reducing or removing the amount of bacteria that uh, it contains. The second um, step is to form it through molds. These molds could be created with fabric, with uh, some plastic bags, or even with uh, paper. So even for molds, we could uh, use a variety of material. Uh, the only um, the only point we should um, consider is to uh, strilling the mold, uh, and the mold could be um, could be available for uh, for um, strilling process. For example, uh, if you want to, for example, uh, use a wooden box as a mold. Uh, it could be very risky because the layers of the um, wood and the behind layers uh, couldn't be strilled very well and um, it's a high risk of contamination. Um, so in the first and second phase, uh, we should control the contamination problem to uh, control the amount of bacteria uh, which exist in the substrate or the other um, fungi uh, or other uh, fungi which uh, exist in the surrounding uh, of the sample uh, of the composite in the surrounding area um, or even molds that could be existed in the area um, and in the first step we let just um, we let the composite colonize again to increase the density of the mycelium network through the substrate so in this way, um, we can ensure that uh, after removing the mold, uh, it could stick uh, all the uh, fibers, all, all the um, substrate could stick thoroughly together uh, through the mycelium network. And the end, uh, we need to just remove the amount of water and, uh, from the composite because this water could uh, be a good, uh, could create a good um, environment for in, for um, growing not just mycelium but also the other uh, the other contamination such as molds, bacteria, uh, bacteria, or even other fungi. Uh, and it is important to consider that by removing the amount of water, the composite will be more uh, stiffer, uh, and it doesn't. Um, look like the sponge and before removing the water be before uh, cooking the composite the composite is looks like uh, like a sponge and if you press it it could it could deform very easily and uh, but after uh, cooking uh, it could be very um, stiff and strength get the strength but what are the uh, positive and negative points of using this uh, as a building material, um, so the positive points. Um, one of the more uh, the most positive points is that it is so lightweight, so we don't have uh, to use uh, the structure for dead load. We have a very slight dead load, and it is low cost and low tech. So it is it could be available um, all over. Uh, all around the world, and uh, especially for uh, undeveloped countries or in the rural areas um, in developing countries, it could be used um, with everyone. Uh, it's it doesn't need high technology to use, or it doesn't need a huge amount of money to invest for creating this material. And it is water repellent, uh, so if the mycelium colonize um, good. It could uh, it it could um, somehow um, 
let the water uh, slide on its surface so it could uh, resist the rain but um it, it somehow absorbs it, it somehow uh, absorbs water too because uh, it has a it has a porous creature and the other positive point is that it is biodegradable and regenerative uh, it can come back to the nature and uh, at the end of uh, its life it could disappear or it can use as food for livestock uh, so it could be beneficial in rural areas after um, ending up the uh, life of the building we won't end up with some waste and we won't uh, give uh, some waste material to the nature uh, we could feed the nature with some new material uh, it could clean the soil uh from the pollution from the pesticides and um and as i said could be used as a uh, food of livestock also uh through bio bio welding we could for example um diminish the uses and the use of uh, cementious material during the construction if we put uh, two particles to uh, mycelium based composite uh, and put it put these two um, beside together after a while uh, we see that the network of the mycelium in each of these particles will grow toward each other uh, and combine um, themselves and connect themselves together as uh, they are one particle so this is another positive point but besides this positive point there are some negative points uh, one of the most uh, important one is the shrinkage as it could change the shape of the material so uh, when we when we are designing with this material uh, we couldn't uh, we couldn't expect um, the exact geometry of the material so it's really hard to uh, design and build precise geometries uh, the, and this shrinkage is uh, actually the result of um, uh, reducing or removing the water amount from the composite and the other problem is low tensile strength it is pretty good at compression um, tension but uh, it doesn't have very good uh, tensile strength um, however the straw uh, and the fibers of straw could help uh, this uh, and ease this issue the other problem is non-standard uh, non material. Um, actually, uh, each lab or each, uh, for example, person who are working with this material has uh, some has in his his or her customized mixture, and this mixture uh, is not always so precise. Uh, it could be um, we could have some uh, we could formulate this but um, couldn't be precise and we don't have any standards uh, for example if we want to um, use it use its mechanical uh, properties we have to do some tests before designing so there is no standard for this material and one of the um, other problems of using this material is low durable uh, low uh, durability as I said, um, it is biodegradable. It's a good point at, as uh, it could come back to nature without any um, side effect, but it is it doesn't have any high durability and it could be problematic sometimes because after a while we should um, destroy these structures uh, because uh, the quality of the structure uh, will diminish uh, throughout the time. But uh, the main question here is what um, what are the suitable forms uh, and suitable geometries um, for designing with this material? Um, if we look at the ancient architects and ar architectures and our ancestors as architects, uh, we see that they um, used dome-shaped structure uh, as these kind of structures are very good at um, tolerating compression stress um, and they are built by hand uh, they are built without any high-tech technology and also um, they could provide some shelters some low-tech shelters um, so these kind of forms 
um, that are shaped through mercenary uh, materials could be uh, actually target of our design. So we um, conducted serious research and we established a lab for this um, for doing this research at Tehran University. Uh, actually, one of my professors, uh, Dr. Mohamed Reza Matini, uh, supported me to establish a lab with uh, his students uh, who were master's students of architectural technology at Tehran University. And uh, uh, we all together um, converted a um, simple classroom to a bio lab. Uh, we covered the windows of the classroom with uh, some black sheets and uh, put a cold evaporator machine to uh, provide the moisture we, the moisture that we needed uh, for cultivating the mycelium and also monitored uh, the temperature and the moisture of the environment of the classroom um, to check um, everything is suitable for mycelium to grow. Um, and here uh, there were some groups. The first group um, decided to use some paper molds. Uh, actually, they, as they wanted to uh, gen create several molds, uh, they decided to use some simple and some uh, existed simple uh, molds. So they used small uh, coffee um, paper cups as a mold and uh, filled it with uh, the base composite, actually with uh, wooden chips uh, plus uh, white oyster mushroom, uh, white oyster uh, mycelium. Um, actually, we used white oyster uh, mycelium spawn uh, for cultivating our um, composite because uh, it is um, so good at growing uh, it can grow in high speed and um, after that we let the composite grow inside the uh, paper cups uh, to get dense and to colonize itself and as you can see uh, it's sometimes bio welded even uh, two cups stick together through uh, the bio welding and after that, uh, the students try to create a model, a module out of uh, these small modules, these small cups. Um, they use some small wooden stick to stick together these three, uh, these three uh, composite cup, and after that. They put uh, these uh, new modules on top of each other to create a dome. Uh, the nice point here is that they could use this paper to cultivate the mycelium in the next phase. So there is no waste here. Um, even the mold could uh, involve in the process, in the next process, and it is totally uh, regenerative and sustainable. And if I want to show you the final result, this is the final result. Um, it, it could, um, as the uh, final, as, as the final modules uh, could create some friction, um, the modules could uh, put on top of each other in one phase, and after that, that they let the whole structure bio welded, and after two weeks, uh, it was as stiff as we could even replace. Um, um, we could move the whole structure without uh, any um, any uh, harming to the structure, any um, removing uh, one of the parts. And in the other uh, alternative, in the other group, uh, they tried to use some uh, other kind of molds. They decided to use um, some food containers, pl plastic food containers. The idea was uh, how we could reuse uh, plastic food containers uh, and use it as molds to create some um, mycelium blocks. 
But after creating uh, these mycelium blocks, they decided to make it more complex because uh, if, they want, if they wanted to uh, create a dome out of these um, bricks, somehow brick-like and brick-shaped uh, blocks, um, it would be really hard because they were so small and it would take lots of time. So uh, they decide to stick um, two of uh, these brick-like structures together to uh, provide a more complex module and to provide more friction uh, between the modules in order to make them stick together somehow and um, provide the opportunity to construct some dome structure dome structure but as you can see these um these uh geometry couldn't be as good as the previous one uh even in this picture you can see some um some departure um and some um some uh holes into the structure which is somehow bigger than uh, what we uh, expected. And they ended up uh, that this kind of, uh, you know, this kind of um, design and this kind of uh, geometry maybe uh, couldn't be the best suitable one because uh, they didn't have good um, connection with each other. Uh, in these modules, uh, it's really important that um, these modules somehow could interlock together in order to put themselves um, and to hold themselves during the during the construction and not to put them. Um, here the students uh, use so much sticks uh, to uh, somehow tie these modules together uh, but in the previous one um, the module itself, uh, because of its good uh, geometry, uh, could hold themselves pretty good. After this project, I uh, came up with an idea that uh, why uh, we we could use uh, mycelium-based composites as micro super adobes. Um, if you are acquainted with um, super adobes, uh, which is uh, which has been invented by Nader Khalili, an Iranian architect um, who has worked um, who worked in um, at Callert Institute uh, in America, and he worked on how we how uh, we could use earth based um, earth based material to construct some um, compression only structures, and how we can use this material and uh, a low-tech technique to provide some shelters and habitats. Um, actually, uh, even NASA used his technology and consider his uh, technique to for uh, constructing shelters uh, on the moon. So um, I was thinking how I can inspire from his design and his method and bring it to the world of mycelium. So, I decided to use some micro super adobe uh, and it would be so great because um, the nature could actually feed from um, the mycelium and could grow on the mycelium too and it's a good some symbiosis between the nature and between and the structure uh, and it's a good somehow um, collaboration somehow a connection between the structure and nature uh, it is uh, totally in contrast with what we are doing now our uh, construction or our buildings it's somehow departed from the nature but how we can uh, somehow make it uh, make the um, connection between nature and our building habitats uh, more stronger and to remove the gap between these two. Uh, so I uh, use some cotton-based fabrics and uh, wrap the mycelium-based composites uh, that uh, that it, ha it was colonized uh, and it was departed from each other uh, and wrapped into some uh, fabric Yes, fabric ribbon and after that provided uh, some uh, micro super adobes 
And by putting these micro superadobes layer on layer on top of each other, we could uh, end up uh, some, with uh, some dome structure. And it is so good because um, it's so flexible and uh, it could be handled so easily. Uh, there is a good uh, connection between the layers because uh, especially if you use uh, straw with um, even with a uh, high length of a straw as you can see the straw here has some uh, longer uh, longer particles and these longer particles could somehow uh, provide some friction in between the layers and uh, could stitch these layers uh, together. So uh, if I want to compare this technique uh, with modulus technique, this could uh, act very, um, very better because uh, it could act better because um, it is more flexible and um, the layers could, could stick together uh, pretty well. And uh, you don't want to uh, wait, for example, to colonize the mycelium into your molds. Uh, you can use the um, mycelium-based composite, the base of it, uh, directly and to uh, use it in your um, dome by uh, putting layer by layer. You don't need to wait for uh, the mycelium colonize into another uh, mold and after uh, it would be colonized, use the mold, uh, the modules, uh, which is actually the result of the mold, and to uh, construct the dome. And this was the final result. Uh, at the left, you can see um, the finished structure after uh, putting layer by layer, and after two weeks, it colonized and totally uh, stick together. Um, Unfortunately, I didn't um, consider any uh, opening into this structure and inside the, um, this stone wasn't colonized very well. But uh, it was, it, it actually answered pretty well and I was satisfied with the result. But if I want to compare this um, micro super adobe with the conventional super adobe of Nader Halili, um, it has some pros and cons. Um, if I want to pinpoint the its positive points, uh, I can say that it is more lightweight. Uh, for example, when you are um, constructing um, the earth-based super adobe, uh, the weight of the uh, these super adobe could be problematic, especially um, at the upper part of the structure. And um, it's really hard to control the weight of the structure. Uh, it, needs, um, it needs experienced people to um, do this. However, in the mycelium-based um, super adobe, as the uh, weight is so low, uh, it's not problematic. And uh, there is no cementious material in this composite. It's totally natural and it's totally biodegradable. And these uh, layers are, are actually uh, stick together through bio welding, through the spreading the network of mycelium into the layers. And uh, so it would be more sustainable and eco-friendly. The other uh, positive point is that it's energy efficiency. However, we need uh, some energy for pasteurizing and sterilizing the substrate uh, or even the, uh, the fabric that we are using. Uh, we don't need a high amount of energy. Um, we won't bake these uh, structures even. This could uh, lose the, their uh, water continent by uh, under the sun. Uh, by sunlight uh, during some uh, one or two days, so it, we won't need any. We won't need to cook it. But in uh, Super Adobe, we have to uh, cook the whole structure to uh, make sure that um, these soy and cementious structure uh, are getting the strength enough strength to uh, hold in their positions, and. But beside these positive points, there are some negative points. Um, the most important one is low durability. Um, as it is biodegradable, it can 
um, it can be digested through uh, microorganisms. So it doesn't have um, high durability and it's it has a porous texture and porous nature um, so unfortunately it could provide a, a good environment for some insects or some other microorganism to grow inside the uh, structure and feed from it and the other uh, negative effect is that um, it it is it doesn't have a good resistance um, against fire, uh, and it could burn, as it consists of um, straw and mycelium. Uh, both of them could burn through fire. However, uh, the super adobe structures are fire resistant, and they could uh, resist the fire and it could be it could protect uh, protect the structure from the fire if i want to summarize the whole um the whole presentation the current trend of our building our building construction is that we're extracting the raw material from the nature and these material these resources are confined are limited and uh it could be uh ended one day and after that, we do some engineering process. And this engineering process involves the research, development, design, construction, uh, material production, uh, construction operation, and also management. And after using the result, which is actually building, we end up uh, with some material. We could reuse the material if we uh, beforehand think about uh, how how to reuse it or how to design for reuse it and keep it keep the material in the cycle of using it or um in other way we should somehow give the nature some waste material that are useless and uh just waste our resources but in other uh attitude we could uh extract some raw material from the nature and um, do some engineering based on uh, based on recycling, based on to uh, give the material back to the nature, and not just keep it into the cycle of using in the building construction, but uh, giving something back and um, reward the nature, uh, not just uh, be a user but to be a giver, and. In this trend, in this regenerative attitude, uh, we could um, end up with a cycle, uh, with a cyclic economy actually, and uh, we could somehow be positive, um, not just negative effect by uh, constructing our habitats or building. And this is uh, this was my end of presentation. So. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Mona. Thank you so, so much. Am I audible to you? You're welcome. Let I, me. I, I hope I am audible to you. Uh, Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Sorry, uh, I couldn't you. hear you. Earlier. Okay, You're no welcome. Can, thank you for your question. Yeah, I mean. Thank you very much for taking us to the beautiful world of micro-materials. I mean, this is, this is a very hot topic, and I keep getting this kind of queries on micro-materials uh, from different people. People are keen on working on this issue in India, especially in India. So thank you for enlightening us with your work. And we will uh, ask the audience if they have any questions. Yeah? Maybe we'll spend some Thanks. next 10, 15 minutes answering their questions. Let me unmute yeah. them. Uh, uh, Madam Sumita, please ask a question. Uh, Madam, your talk was uh, very enlightening. So the question is, uh, this composites, uh, what will be the stability of these composites? Have you tried it at a wide range of temperature? Sorry, I didn't understand. Uh, could you please repeat your question? The, the question is, what will be the stability of these composites uh, which you have made? So have you tried it at wide range of temperature? 
the reason i'm asking is can these composites be used at uh, you know like uh, where there is high temperature like that or is there any temp a particular midline temperature that these composites can be used mm -hmm. Uh, actually, we cook these composites uh, in 40 degree uh, for 40 Celsius temperature. Um, it can be cooked, but uh, for example, if you fire it, it will burn. Um, but through this uh, 40 degrees um, temperature, it, you should keep the temperature lower than uh, 100 Celsius, uh, because in, at 100 Celsius degree, the water will boil and uh, it will totally deform your uh, composite so uh, you will lose the geometry uh, so means, just, uh, okay means this composite should be used in a place like uh, like 40 degrees like that right not it should not be beyond uh, in which places no where this in application when it comes uh, sorry, I, um, in which application i i heard application but um, so when, as you said, it gets deformed. So then it should be used in not like above high temperatures, right? Um, yes, uh, it shouldn't be in high. But no, for example, even in a high, um, if you mean the climate, uh, the, um, the weather temperature won't be uh, upper than 50 degree and it won't be problematic. Uh, and if you want to, for example, construct a, a building or habitat, a shelter, anything uh, in larger scale, we won't cook that, uh, we won't cook the structure, we just let it dry. Uh, and if you want the cooking process, it's uh, specifically for smaller project um, because in large scale project, you just, uh, it's not good even to um, heat the um, composite directly or very fast. Uh, even uh, before uh, putting, before putting uh, the composite uh, into oven, uh, we just let the composite um, at least a day outside uh, to uh, have a good um, encounter with the air. Uh, and to let it a little dry and after that put it uh, into oven to become strength and lose its water. Uh, the heat should be very, um, very moderate. Uh, we, we couldn't, uh, for example, uh, fastly dry the material. It should lose uh, its water content uh, very slowly. And in this way, uh, it won't hurt. So another important uh, this thing uh, striking in my mind is what will be the cost involved in the production of these uh, composites? Is it like uh, economically it is very feasible when compared to the existing ones, something like that? Um, I think you speak so fast, I can't understand uh, you completely. Um, I repeat the question. The question is, what will be the cost involved in the production of these composites? Is it like that from the existing ones, these are uh, very economical so that it can come into place of larger scale? Is it like that? Yes, um, it doesn't need very um, high amount of money. Uh, the cost of uh, energy is uh, only uh, in pasteurizing and sterilizing process. You don't even uh, you don't even need to have the autoclave or some, uh, you know, special structure and um, special equipment. You can boil the um, substrate, the straw, anything and that it is the substrate um, into some containers and um, it doesn't have any cost. Even uh, in rural areas, uh, they can be it can be used, and they don't need to provide any uh, special equipment. Even, uh, for example, uh, monitoring the temperature or the moisture, it doesn't need it um, very much because after a while, you you will guess uh, how much how amount of um, the moisture or uh, the temperature it would need. Um, and even, for example. Uh, you don't you won't have uh, any uh, cold evapor evaporator you can spray uh, streamed water onto the composite bags uh, to provide the moisture um, it it could okay. be done in several ways yeah okay. and it's a very efficient way okay my last question is 
So as you said, the fungal species can thrive on this composite species, composite, right? So can over a span of time, can certain fungal species can get self-mutated and get, lead to origin of another new species of fungus? Uh, you talk so fast. Uh, I didn't get that. No, the question is, as you have said, certain fungal species can thrive on this composites, right? Yes. Yes. So can at certain temperature or any uh, at times, can they get self-mutated and give rise to a new fungal species? Can this happen? Um, I can't understand the question. Um, the question is, you, can this, uh, yeah, the question is, can this creation of this composite can lead to origin of another new species of fungus? Oh, uh, you mean that after uh, we created this composite, we ended up with other species? Uh, yes. No, no, no. Um, actually, uh, it is quite safe to work with um, these kind of materials. Uh, at first, uh, the students, even at Tehran University, were so worried that uh, it could um, harm their health or um, it could contain some, for example, dangerous microorganisms or it could change to something new. No, uh, no way. It couldn't change uh, because, uh, for example, uh, it totally depends on uh, the spawn of uh, the mycelium or the liquid culture of the mycelium that we are using. Um, and the environment that we are providing for cultivating this uh, mycelium-based composite is totally uh, clean and uh, sterile. I mean that you minimize the other uh, microorganism, uh, microorganism existence in the composite. So uh, it's near to zero to end up with other kind of species or um, if this happened, uh, it would um, depend on the liquid culture or the spawn. Uh, it, it, nothing would change during the cult cultivating process. Yep. Okay. Thanks for your answers. Thank You're you, welcome. madam. Thank you, madam Samita, for all those wonderful questions. Um, I request the people who have raised their hands, uh, please speak slowly and clearly so that the communication is effective. Thank you so much. Dr. Sanjay Saxena, please. You had a very wonderful and informative talk. Have you heard about Mr. Bill Ross? Sorry, Dr. Uh, I can't hear you. Dr. Sanjay Saxena, we have, we have, you have a voice, a voice issue. Please fix it. We'll come back to you. Thank you. Kindly fix your voice issue. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dr. Mohan Kumar, please ask your question. Please speak um, clearly. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me, madam? Mona? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ma'am. Yeah. This is regarding again micro material. Uh, there are two companies probably who would have come across uh, in US that is Ecovative and uh, MicroVox. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. They are uh, uh, extensively working on developing of different types of micro material. And they also have something called do it yourself uh, kits are available. Uh, have you tried uh, using those kits and for uh, a similar uh, kind of experiments uh, where uh, do you get mm -hmm. the same experiment with uh, what what cultures you have uh, mm -hmm. like that um no i haven't because we didn't have uh, i didn't have access to these kind of products in iran but um you know, um, I've started with cultivating um, in the in a stool of my uh, that has existed uh, in my bedroom. Uh, even before uh, the bio lab uh, at Tehran University, I started to cultivate in, in my bedroom. You don't you don't need any special uh, you know equipment. Uh, you can provide some straw, boiling it uh, in the container on your oven uh, to pasteurize it, and um, provide some spawn of uh, oyster mushroom. I use oyster mushroom because the speed of uh, colonizing it uh, is so good and you can uh, reach to uh, answer more easily and fast uh, and fastly and faster. So uh, you don't need even to have access to these kind of products. Uh, and it's a, such an easy process, but at first it's somehow confusing. Uh, 
there are so many um, videos on YouTube or so many, uh, actually we are trying to provide um, somehow a self help book for those who want to uh, produce this material um, and it would be in English and as soon as uh, we uh, ended up and uh, finished the PDF, uh, we will share it online because uh, we would like to somehow encourage everyone to work on this material. Uh, it's it's easy to work with it. Uh, at first, it sounds confusing, but you will find your way. Um, trust me, just try it and uh, you will see good results. Uh, Ma'am, in the micro material, so you will be compressing and you will be removing the water, moisture. Uh, after some time, or some time, if the water catches, uh, if the mycelium catches water, are there any chances of growth? No. If uh, when you heat the mycelium, uh, is it is actually uh, it will dead, because uh, the um, the all content of the water uh, through um, inside its threads inside its uh, delicate network uh, will be emitted and it will dead. Uh, and even after you sink it in the water, it won't um, grow again. Um, no, after heating, uh, if the heating uh, was be uh, would be proper, for example, if you uh, heat it uh, with 40 Celsius degree, uh, you have to let it, I, I, I think, at least four to six hours, uh, let it be in the oven to dry completely. Uh, but after drying completely, it won't um, react to the water, no. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mohan Kumar, for your questions. Mm -hmm. uh, next is Nagendra Chandavachi. If you are around, please ask your question, Nagendra. Yeah, yeah. Good afternoon, ma'am. Very nice presentation, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, actually, I am uh, I am working in the same mushroom, ma'am, Plotus uh, oyster mushroom, and I am also trying the same uh, like bricks development. Uh, but ma'am, I found after a few days, there is some contamination like Aspergillus or Penicillium like. So, mm -hmm. so can you suggest me what I do for uh, prevention of this microbial contamination? Uh, you know, contamination could uh, cause uh, from several reasons. Um, it based on, for example, uh, what are the signs you are seeing. Um, if you uh, encounter in a sore smell, uh, it might be bacteria. Uh, the amount of bacteria in your substrates was more than uh, it should be. Uh, if you see some uh, black spots, it might be uh, the black uh, the black mold or even um, some black fungi. Um, I, I don't know uh, what we, we say in English. Uh, black mushrooms, we say uh, some black fungi um, that are existing in our house or in our stores um, if you see for example some green uh, spots uh, it would be also mold um, some of this contamination could be uh, removed but um, some of them it couldn't for example the black mold uh, or green mold uh, it's so severe and it could um, spread so easily and you should just remove that sample from the others. And you always need to uh, provide some space between your samples to make sure that this contamination won't spread to all uh, the others. But I don't know what the signs of uh, your contamination you're encountering. Okay, ma'am, I will take care and I will try to uh, according the new protocol and maybe I will get good result. Thank you very much, ma'am, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doc, and thank you, Dr. Nagendra, for that uh, very interesting question and very which has, uh, which has uh, some practical values, actually. Uh, Stanzin Dolma, please ask your question. Oh, okay, Dr. Pian Singh. Yeah, hello, good afternoon, sir. Uh, hello. Yes, doctor. Yeah. Uh, yeah, hello, Dr. Mona. Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> Can you hear yeah. me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, so I'm working in this NFCCI, this Agarka Research Institute as a mycologist, uh, fungal taxonomy specially. So generally in your experiment for molding these material, uh, 
uh, in gen generally you are using only basidiomycete cultures like what you have told you earlier that oyster mushroom so uh, yes yeah i so used other, uh, so, so genera which we are using they belong to only basidiomycete means only mushroom uh, genera or some other uh, genera means like a micromycete means lower fungi um, actually, we used the oyster, uh, the white oyster mushroom spawns. Uh, we didn't uh, create the liquid culture even. Uh, we provide the spawns from uh, those centers who um, actually cul um, were cul cultivating uh, the oyster mush mushroom. And uh, I buy, uh, I bought the uh, spawn of the those mushrooms from uh, that center and use it in our yeah, because my interest is apart, apart from this basidiomycetes general like mushroom, many of them are very slow growing. What I'm asking that lower fungi like mucrelium, there are a number of genera which are very, very fast growing. So because oh, yes. of this fast, fast growth, can uh, we use or that uh, whoever is working on that apart from this mushroom, can that other genera like half growing like a fusarium uh, your uh, other uh, means genera my uh, mucrelian many of them are very very fast growing can they bind material to become this hard uh, like what you you are doing in your work is it possible or are there are any other persons apart from this basidiomycetes genera are they are using um, actually only kind of um mycelium spawn which uh, was accessible for us was uh, oyster uh, and gonoderma gonoderma is not very much uh, fast in growing but uh, for faster for fastening the process we add um, a slight amount of flour to uh, the mixture uh, as a catalyst to um, encourage the mycelium uh, to grow and um, but it's sometimes uh, end up with uh, contamination it's so risky to use but um i didn't use uh, other species to, for a speed up the uh, cultivation process because i i don't have access to any uh, uh myco mycologist or any um uh, mycology or biology center to provide us these uh, kind of spawns or uh, liquid cultures yeah uh, well, uh, well, let me okay, you. Thank, thank you very let, much yeah thank you dr singh i understood your question uh, mona yeah yeah uh, miss mona can you hear me yeah yeah sure uh, he dr singh was interested can we use micro fungi like aspergillus penicillium you know maybe cladosporium which are fast growing in micromaterial research probably it is possible yeah yeah that, that is my question because there are a number of genera which are very very fast growing which can helpful you know, that binding your material whatever fiber you are using oh, yeah, that you. Was, thank, yeah you. That. thank you dr then we will discuss it yeah we'll discuss it yeah, yeah. maybe with you personally thank you or mr okay, thank you mr chiu kumar kirtan Hello, ma'am. It was a nice presentation. Thank you. Ma'am, uh, my question is like, isn't it more time consuming uh, for uh, getting that mold and all? And is there any other techniques you employed in this so that you can you are getting the products more faster? Um, you mean um, removing the mold and somehow I use another technique to use the mycelium composite? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, you can, for example, 3D print it. Uh, but for 3D printing, uh, you should uh, add some gel part to the uh, mixture. And um, this um, somehow uh, increase the risk of contamination because it's, uh, it, would in, uh, it would decrease uh, the availability for ventilation of the composite. Uh, but you can uh, use no molds and using... Um, 3D printing, and it will work. Uh, it's it is a, a little bit more tricky, but um, 
Um, there are so many research now is on this topic, 3D printing of uh, mycelium-based composites. Uh, by using this 3D printing, can we we can create more better molds and all instead of this using this uh, the technique you told it require it has more porosity and uh, some issues. But if we use 3D printing in that, wouldn't be more beneficial for us so that we can get the product earlier and then uh, the products and all. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, 3D printing would be more uh, productive, but uh, it is not more low-tech. For example, for 3D printing, uh, you will definitely uh, need to sterilize the uh, substrate because uh, the risk of contamination would be increased. So you need to access the autoclave. Uh, and also you need to access some uh, Cartesian machine or robotic arm for uh, 3D print for a 3D printing and numerical control machine that could uh, somehow lead this uh, process of printing. Um, it would it is a great um, way of using this material, but it is not low tech. Uh, actually, the focus of my research is to use it um, as a low tech uh, method of construction um, for um, some. You know, it's a, it could be a local material and uh, in local areas, uh, we even don't have sometimes access to a laser cutting machine. So uh, it, it could be somehow problematic with the uh, technology that it needs, but it's a great idea. Um, isn't this technique to need some aseptic conditions and some uh, techn uh, technical person to handle this? Uh materials because normal layman cannot do all such things he needs some guidance or assistance even this too needs some um what they call technical persons and some not like uh, 3d printing but it requires some kind of technicians to maintain this right mom um yeah um for example in at universities um not in iran we don't have uh, such a lab but at penn state uh, there are some mycologists and some biologists that help uh, the students especially those who are working on um, the 3d printing composites uh, from this material um, to for example uh, use other species or for example use other additives uh, and how they could affect the uh, quality of printing uh, product or uh, even lessen the risk of contamination or um, other factors that they could be important uh, in this process uh, it would be more professional people uh, if you want to uh, conduct a research on uh, mycelium 3d printing Okay. Thank. That's it, ma'am. Uh, we have. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Kirtan. Those were really interesting questions, actually. Uh, uh, I mean, those questions added uh, to the discussion we are having now. Uh, we are having a wonderful discussion here. Thank you very much. We have a time for two quick questions. One from Dr. Sashirika. Uh, hello, Dr. Mona. It was a very interesting uh, uh, talk of yours. And we are also trying to do this biomaterial. I just had one doubt. Um, we tried uh, with various uh, substrates, uh, right from uh, shokagin bagasse to straw to uh, uh, sawdust and everything. But then we couldn't achieve the mycelial growth in the center. It is always in the periphery. So uh, is, is it something, uh, uh, is, is there any way where we can uh, get the mycelium grow in the center as well so that the solid structure can be maintained? Or did um, you try any? Yeah. You know, um, it's um, it wants to grow uh, at the round of the sample, at the round of your uh, the plastic bag, uh, because it yeah. can access to uh, more amount of um, air. It's uh, it's yeah. it oxygen for its growth, but at the center, uh, it's uh, if it lack of the oxygen and uh, it it would decrease its growth. Um, but it can, uh, it, it will grow even in uh, at the center, uh, unless uh, if you uh, have some contamination. Because uh, if, for example, your substrate or the, um, if your substrate has uh, more amount of bacteria, um, the risk of um, contamination at the center of the sample would be uh, more than. Uh, around of the sample because around of the sample um, is uh, 
has a better ventilation situation, but uh, at the center, mm -hmm. it's more dark and um, it uh, has less access to oxygen. Uh, it's better to, for example, use uh, thinner plastic bags that could, uh, thinner, for example, okay. yeah, provide the a better, subs thinner uh, substrate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And yeah, if in you some are, papers, uh, sorry, sorry, go ahead, go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, if you are uh, using sawdust, sawdust is so compact and it doesn't yeah. let the oxygen uh, go through the substrate. Um, whenever you are using sawdust, um, um, for sure you have to use a, a great amount of subs, uh, a straw as substrate. Yeah. Um, always uh, combine sawdust with substrate for example 10 percent 10 percent sawdust and um 90 percent straw because straw could uh, provide a good ventilation uh, because of its um the hole uh, it has inside uh, it is a good okay. somehow pipe for uh circulate the air through the whole sample Okay. Yeah, I think we should try the different sizes of straws. So maybe we could uh, experiment more on the sizes of straws for the substrate. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Man. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Other people, please mute yourself. Uh, thank you. Uh, last, oh, no, no. You cannot ask any more questions. Sorry. Uh, last question from Stanzin Dolma, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, my afternoon. question is from uh, Micro Super Building. Uh, so, in this model, you explained that the models are exposed to sunlight uh, rather than heating to dry and drain water. So, on exposure to sunlight in open air, isn't it uh, like prone to get contamination? So, if it gets contaminated, how do you deal with it and how you prevent the contamination? Mm -hmm. You know, when you expose the material to the sunlight, um, you let it dry. Um, the bacteria the, or the other uh, source of contamination uh, would attack the samples in dark in darkness and in moisture uh, environment. When you're exposing it with the air and uh, with the light, it won't, um, nothing will happen. Even uh, a slight amount of um, bacteria or even a slight amount of uh, other moles, if happen, uh, if attacked to the uh, to the composite, the mycelium itself could uh, somehow um, compete with these uh, bacteria, with these even um, other microbes organisms. Um, mycelium could um, release some uh, metabolite uh, that could compete with these uh, contaminations. But uh, when um, you have a good ventilation. Uh, you won't uh, have a risk, a high risk, or even have a risk of contamination. You're exposing the sample um, and letting let it dry, and uh, there is no uh, good condition condition for other uh, microorganisms to want to attack uh, the sample. So no worries. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, madam. Madam Mona Lalsani, thank you very much. It has been uh, wonderful to have you amongst us. Uh, you have been very kind uh, to spend your uh, Sunday with us, sharing your knowledge with us, and patiently listening to all the questions, answer to them. Uh, it has been wonderful uh, you being with you. Thank you so much. Uh, before uh, I can, I will let you know uh, before um, uh, just that our uh, Dr. Rohit Sharma will have come final comments. Dr. Rohit. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shana. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you, Ms. Munaf, for a very nice uh, talk. Mm -hmm. I think uh, even we have tried at our end uh, making uh, bricks from the uh, uh, this uh, agricultural waste as well as the garden pots and other things. And we are also trying to build a kind of sample using uh, eco-friendly packaging for a perfume industry uh, kind of thing. So it's really nice. And I think micro-packaging and mycelium or the composites has a lot of potential for future. Uh, for preparing the eco-friendly structures, as you said very correctly, uh, as an energy energy efficient uh, thing. So it can also solve the local agricultural waste problem also and reduce the pollution at the local level. And uh, with the global warming and climate change affecting our earth, every bit counts in contributing to the sustainable development, I think. 
and uh, so thank you very much for for the information and the igniting uh, people uh, of mycology jo we are working over traditional mycologist so this kind of inter interdisciplinary research will definitely help involving mycologists uh, architects engineers will definitely have to have innovative solution technologies for future thank you so much ms mona thank you so much thank you thank you for your invitation and thank you for providing me this opportunity thank you So uh, moving on to